What? <laughs> Hi guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. My name is Taylor McGahey and yes, I said McGahey. I feel like I've never really specified how to pronounce my name on any of my platforms or in a video at least. And it's McGahey. I've had people call me McConaughey, McCougahey all kinds of things you would never even understand but now that that is out of the way if you are new thank you for clicking on my video welcome to my channel um while you're here you might as well subscribe and if you're gonna subscribe you might as well hit that bell so you get notified every time i post a video but if you are a returning subscriber what is up with goody thank you for coming back i love you but yeah if you read the title by now you would know that this video is going to be a how to catfish video so i know y'all are like damn bitch you look crazy my face is red because i just like off a mask my hair looks a mess I look like Albert Einstein we just need to go from 0 to 100 so that's what we're about to do if you want to see me teach you guys how to catfish basically I don't know how to describe it just just keep on watching okay so I'm gonna start off with my hair um honestly this wet hair look is honestly so 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 easy I know y'all probably like bitch what the hell look I got cats and these cats they literally get on everything and they like to scratch everything so i like to spray them with water every now and then okay and this if you can't tell like sprays out hella water at one time and i love that <laughs> when i finished using all the fabric softener because that's what this is um i usually use this for my cats but it just it's not getting the job done the water's not strong enough lizzie is bad as hell and when she feels this or when i pick this bottle up she goes nuts and i know y'all are probably like okay you're supposed to be telling me how you do your hair why are you talking about your cats? But literally, for this wet hair look, I spray my hair with water, like soak my hair basically, to the point to where I honestly kind of need like a towel around my neck. But I comb it through my hair, and then once I comb the water through my hair, then I go back in with um, a little bit of mousse. I have this mousse from the brand called Cantu, and it's a wave like um, whip, so it's not very crunchy, so it's not very hardening. Um, so when I have days where I want nice curls and I want it to kind of look wet But I don't want it to be super hard and crunchy looking I'll use this and then I have days where I want it to look hard as hell and it never um, Freezes up so then I'll take my got to be and my freeze spray and honestly I'll take got to be with some water in my hand and like rub the gel into my hand and just finger it through my hair and finger it through the ends of my hair and when I finger the gel through the ends of my hair that's how I keep my hair from like drawing down and getting frizzy again and like getting big again i hate that especially with short hair i cannot stand to have short like big hair so i'm gonna do the same thing on this side for today i do want that hard crunchy look so i'm gonna use got to be and maybe a little free spray and i do like to use mousse at the top of my hair too whether i want it to be crunchy or not just to help kind of lay the hair down my daddy is facetiming me somebody's always trying to interrupt me dries down it dries down and it hardens I take like a quarter size amount I'm not gonna lie I almost said a dime size not a dime size so I like to take that got to be and rub it in my hands and then I'll spray some water in my hand and then rub my hands together again and it kind of just makes like a I don't know, hair paste <laughs> I don't do hair you guys I'm trying to explain this as well as I possibly can and then once I get the product through where I want it, I kind of just fix my hair like in the curls that I want it to harden in. I like to finger through these pieces up here because I kind of want them to dry down straight and like just have the ends be curly. Um, Cause again, big hair, it's not my thing. Really, I'm not that into it. But then for my baby hairs, I definitely use this whip mousse I like it because it's not hardening like I was telling you guys earlier. So when it comes to 
like laying baby hairs down, it doesn't make it look unnatural. It kind of just makes the hair form into that shape. And then once it dries down, like the hair will move around and it won't stay looking like hard or stuck or anything, but your baby hairs won't be all over the place either. We can move on to the face now. We need some skincare. You can't fool anybody with dry skin. So we about to jump into the skin. I already did a face mask. I did the Glam Glow um, Thirsty Mud, Super Mud, whichever the one, the white one is, the like cleans your pores, cause my face was in a row. I did a face mask already, but I'm gonna go in with a whole bunch of serums, some oils, some moisturizers, all of that good stuff. Skin prep is very important. I know a lot of people probably skip that step when it comes to face makeup, but your makeup is only gonna look as good as your skin looks. There's just no way to hide texture and all of those kinds of things. So make sure you're taking care of your skin first, and then when you put your makeup on, however much makeup you decide to put on, it'll look a lot better than it would with a dirty face. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump on into the face. So let's do it. Okay, so Wet n Wild just is not playing with the PR packages, clearly. They sent me another huge package. Um, it's their Rebel Rose collection. I know this is, you're probably like, girl, girl, what are you doing? But there's skincare on the top, and there was more makeup underneath this as well. But I say that to say, I'm going to use the um, multi-usage oil that it came with. And I used it yesterday just to hydrate my skin some. Again today, it felt really good. It was really thick, and I liked that feeling. Not thick, but that's not the word I wanted to use. I felt like it was very hydrating. But for an oil, I kind of do feel like it feels kind of heavy. I love a nice, supple complexion. So I'm gonna go in with my MAC Strobe Cream in this shade Peach Light. And I'm gonna focus this more on my cheeks and kind of like the high points of my face, but I'm still basically gonna rub it everywhere. I love strobe cream. I've noticed that like throughout the day, when I wear this, I feel like, I don't know, my face just gets dewier and dewier and I really feel like it's this strobe cream. I really, really do. Um, but let's move on. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do my face first. I never do complexion first, like before my brows. So catfish wise, I would recommend full coverage. You know, that completely covers everything, like all your problems, your insecurities, your, I'm just playing. <laughs> ha, I'm annoying. But yeah, no, I'm about to put on some very full coverage foundation. I'm using the same um, mix that I used in my last video, which was, I'm pretty sure, L'Oreal Pro Glow and Fenty, if I'm not lying. But y'all know I like to press it in with my Makeup Forever. This is not a Makeup Forever sponge. Wow. This is a Makeup Shack sponge. I don't know why I said that. But um, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and start with a thin amount of product, but I'm going to press this into my face. Oh, I don't know. I'm just looking real pale. Like my neck versus the bottom of my face right now, not cutting it. And what I'm not going to do is have a really dark yellow face and a white neck. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some NARS Sheer Glow in the shade Poon Jab um, because that's a lot lighter than the colors that I'm using. And I'm just gonna mix that in there and that'll help even this out some so it's not so dark. Cause uh, baby, no man. Honestly, I wanna put concealer underneath my eyes first and let that just like sit there while I do my complexion. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this Fenty Concealer and do the absolute most and put this all over my face basically. Oops. We're trying to catfish, right? I just really like this concealer, okay, people? Don't judge me. I remember one time I was priming my eyes with concealer at Sky's house. And Sky was like, Taylor, what's on your eyelids? I was like, concealer. And she was like, damn, bitch, that's a lot of concealer. I will never forget that. I felt so dragged because when I I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, damn, bitch, that is a lot of concealer. <laughs> I love friends like that, that like drag you, but at the same time, it's like, they make you realize things that you should have been realizing a long time ago. I really don't like the term catfishing just because people are like, I don't know. People are dumb. Like, people are literally take a girl's picture online and be like, oh my God, she looks so different without makeup on. She's such a catfish. As if the makeup that you're spending your money on is supposed to make you look the same. 
See, that's where y'all get messed up because you don't know what you're doing when you sit down to do your makeup. So when you get to the final result and you don't look much different than you did from the beginning because you don't know what you're doing, then you assume like that's what's supposed to be going on. But no sis, you just need a little education. But it's okay, like to each his own. It's just, I hate seeing people like literally save somebody's picture on the internet and like hop on Twitter and be like, oh my God, do y'all see how this bitch looks without makeup? Like who has the time? It is very weird. It's honestly kind of creepy, like, but hey, y'all do what you want to do with your time. And we're going to cover everything up. I'm going over my brows one more time and then I'm going to go in and start to blend this concealer out. And guys are quick to call a girl a catfish simply behind her makeup or her hair. But y'all be going through the same stuff. Like, what's underneath that beard? You. But, <laughs> like, these are things that you don't say out loud. Well, at least I don't. Okay, well, I just said that loud. But I don't say to people just because that's how I feel inside. Like, I see a lot of men that I know without a beard. They probably aren't the most attractive to me. But I would never go out of my way to say that because that's just rude, like who raised you? But a lot of y'all on this internet thing, y'all just don't care. Like y'all will literally get on the internet and just feel entitled just because somebody puts themselves out there. Like just because somebody uploads a picture on the internet does not mean that they're expecting you to take their picture, save it, put it next to something else and be like, oh my God, look at this person. Like, no, I don't know. I feel like the internet has a lot of people feeling entitled. And like they, oh, it's my Twitter, it's this, it's that, it's this. Yes, it is, but at the end of the day, don't you realize like there are actual people behind these accounts that you're like tweeting at? And it's just like, why would you want somebody to go to sleep at night, possibly with their feelings hurt, knowing like you did that, you know? And I know to some people it's not that deep, but a lot of people do get attacked online. Like, and it's not okay. I know, I don't know how I got to this topic so fast, but I'm, I don't know, I feel like, I've always felt that way when it came to social media. That was like one thing that's always bothered me about like being a quote unquote beauty influencer is that people just feel like they have the right to say and do whatever when it comes to you just because you, oh, you like you work on the internet. Like you put yourself out there. Like you make these YouTube videos. You're trying to let people see who you are, blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah, you could tweet at somebody and tell them that they're ugly. But at the same time, it's like, why Why are you so angry inside? Like, why do you need to be on the internet telling people that? Like, you could just not be a shitty person, but you know. Hey, honestly, and I've never been catfished in this sense. Like, I think I'm talking to some guy, but it's really somebody else. But I've definitely been catfished by exes and friends um, in the sense of like, you think there's somebody one way because that's how they keep talking to you or telling you that's how they are but they're completely a different <laughs> kind of person and that's honestly i feel like that's even scarier people are really good at putting up fronts like they actually really care about you and that they're in your life because they genuinely just want to be there that they don't want anything out of you um but i've definitely been duped a time or two i'm coming to learn i've, I've noticed things about people and like now when I see red flags, I just I just note them and I move on. I don't um, get as worked up as I used to. I used to get very bothered by things like that, like things that I would peep and notice or that would stress me out that I would feel like, dang, is that person lying to me? Or dang, is this person not as real as they say they are? But now at this point, it's just like, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter the sex, gender, whatever, like people are gonna do what they wanna do and you can't control them. So when it comes to people catfishing you, like literally like trying to dupe you for somebody else or just fooling you and getting over on you, at the end of the day, you reap what you sow. So like you're gonna get that back. And that's how I end up getting over things like that. Um, because with like most situations, I feel like most situations where you end up hurt, you usually don't get closure per se out of things, which I've never really gotten at. Um, I mean, everybody always kind of wants an apology, but at the end of the day, the apology that you're probably gonna get is probably fake because it's coming from a person that really doesn't give a fuck about you. So you gotta just let it go. I mean, I really don't know how I got on the topic of being 20 and feeling lost and just trying to figure life out, but I just honestly feel like, especially with social media, like people just have this 
feeling that they're just trying to rush and like hurry up and get there to like their dreams, where they want to be, what they're trying to get, what they're trying to do. Like just stop and enjoy life for a second. Like I was there and that's really how I was feeling and that's why I felt like I was so anxious and stressed and like mad and hurt and upset all the time because there were things going on in my personal life that were like causing me anxiety and hurting my feelings and X, Y, and Z. And then on top of that, like I felt like work life, I was just lost and I didn't have any direction. I didn't know where to go because I was so focused on everything else that was bothering me that I just ended up just sitting there and I just sat there for so long depressed, like I don't know what to do. Um, but I finally picked myself up and I started working towards what I wanted. I sat down, I wrote down my goals, I figured out my plan and this is what I'm doing. So I just feel like as long as you have a plan and you know what you're doing, you're okay. Never feel like, oh, you need to be getting married, engaged, pregnant, uh, traveling around the world. Like whatever you want to do at your age, your time that is okay it's fine like if you want to go to school it's cool if you don't want to go to school it's cool if you want to be a youtuber if you want to be a travel vlogger if you want to whatever you want to do do it i know i just said youtuber and travel vlogger like they're not the same thing basically but do it <laughs> um yeah no for the longest time i kind of felt like i was struggling with deciding what it was that i really wanted to do and i keep talking about that in a lot of my videos but i just feel like i've been seeing a lot of people talk on social media about feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm 23 and like, I, I still haven't graduated or like, I'm 23 and yeah, I have a job, but like, this isn't good enough. Like, stop beating yourself up. <laughs> it is okay. You will be okay. Slow down, enjoy them, breathe. Take a breather, look around, enjoy yourself. I know I'm annoying, but honestly, for real, like, it's okay to live your life and enjoy your life because every year is the only year you're that age. Like everybody's always like, oh my God, you turned 21 this year. Oh my God, you turned this year. Every year is one year that you will never get back. So just make sure you're living it the way that you want to live it. Um, but yeah, we're just filling in these brows. I'm using the ABH Dip Brow in Taupe. I haven't used Dip Brow in so long, but I've been using it recently again and I kind of like it. Don't you be the same say you told you. Hey yo, my kids are awfully quiet. Either they're all asleep or they're all doing something they ain't got no business doing. Okay, so I'm gonna jump off camera and go ahead and do one eye and then come back. But like I did in my last video, I'm not gonna show you guys my bronzer routine just because I feel like it's very repetitive. I don't know if I told y'all, but I set my under eyes with the Charlotte Tilbury powder. Um, it's the same powder that I used in my last video. But I'm gonna go ahead and do my bronzer and one eye off camera, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so if you're anything like me and you're blind as a bat, you probably hate watching tutorials or videos where people do their eyeshadow and you can't see. So I zoomed you guys in, but we're gonna go ahead and jump on into the eyes. I never feel like I give you guys like a full-on tutorial eye-wise. Um, I kind of feel like I always, I don't know, just do my eyes and like tell y'all what I'm using, but we never actually get to go step by step in depth on how I do my eyes. So that's what we're gonna do today. I feel like I can give you guys some blending tips while we're at it too. So I'm gonna take this Glam AF palette from MAC um, and it's in collaboration with Patrick Starr. And I'm gonna take this Makeup Shack T50 brush. Makeup Shack actually sent me a whole bunch of new brushes. I actually just got them in the mail just now. They sent all these, and if you guys don't know, which you should know by now because I feel like I say it every time I mention the Makeup Shack, I have a discount code. Um, so, go on their website, and when you get ready to check out, use code TAYLOR, and that will save you 70%. 70%, I wish. Wow, I'm sorry. 20%. I don't know why I said 70. I don't know. I like to apply and blend while I lay down like that first wash of color. And I say wash, like you can't completely tell that this is brown. I like to go in and blend everything out first. I know a lot of people to get the color payoff and like that really intense crease that people have been um, stamping eyeshadow. Before I do that, I'm gonna take a little powder and sit on the top of my cheeks. I'm kind of scared of fallout. But yeah, I'm gonna take this Morphe M433 and with this, I am gonna stamp this color onto my lid. So this is the darkest color in the palette and it's like a brown, what, what color is this? What's it called? So I can explain this. It's in bark, so yeah, it's like a dark brown color, um, but it has like kind of a purpley undertone. And I honestly feel like that's how I ended up with this uh, blue on my eye, because this was supposed to be a matte neutral look at first. I like to work my shadow in circular motions 
while I push it back and forth into my crease as well. And when I say push, I mean like I literally work the shadow where I want it to go. So depending on whether I want the eyeshadow to be more rounded or if I kind of want to drag it out, I will literally push the brush that way and kind of blow everything out the way I want it to be shaped. But for right now, I'm gonna keep it in this circular shape and I'm trying to not bring this color this um, embark color too high up. I kind of want to cover up that brown that we first laid down, but then I kind of don't. I kind of just want that brown to peek through at the top. Okay, so just to go ahead and intensify this a little bit more, I'm going to take a matte black shadow and I'm going to stamp that in my outer corner as well. So we're going to keep this pretty low down. I am going to drag it into the center of my lid though, just to make sure my eye is nice and dramatic but I'm not gonna bring it up super, super high. I'm just gonna blend it out to where it's kind of blown out, but I just don't want a lot of the pigment in the black shadow up in my crease. Okay, so now that the scary part's done, um, I'm gonna go ahead and dust away this powder on my face. I really only use that powder when I use like dark shadows and if I do my face first just to avoid any fallout. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to eyeliner. I'm gonna use this Laura Geller liner and I'm placing this in my waterline and then I'm gonna smoke it out with this teal shadow in this Morphe palette. This Morphe palette is the 35V and that's also where I was grabbing that matte black from. If you guys. I'm gonna take a Makeup Shack T60, which is just a smudger brush, and I'm gonna buff this liner out. Ignore my broken nail, but I'm going in with this matte teal on my lower lash line, and that's what I'm gonna use to set that eyeliner and then to also smoke this out some more. It's literally the exact same color. It's crazy that I picked these two. Okay, so next I'm taking this new Makeup Shack T82, and you guys, this brush is so slim and tapered. I love it, but I'm gonna take that and just some browns and kind of, okay, that's a little too much, <laughs> but I'm gonna smoke out my lower lash line a little bit more just to make sure everything looks nice and seamless. There's a color in this palette that's similar to Blue Brown from MAC, which I'm going to use on my lid. I'm using that like in the center of my lid. And then I'm gonna use Lumi Pigment from Sugar Pill in my inner corner. So I'm gonna spray my brush first just to ensure that it's nice and pigmented and the color kind of lays down on my eyelid and then I'm going to press and swipe. For me, pressing and swiping, that's how I get the most color payoff. And it kind of depends on the product and how you're using it and how it's formulated, like loose things. I feel like it wouldn't work as well. Maybe, I guess, it depends on the kind of hand you have and how much pressure you're using. But with pressed shadows, I definitely feel like swiping and pressing is the best way to get color payoff. Um, and that's kind of how it is when you use your finger to apply eyeshadow, but I can't do that with long nails, so. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take Sugar Pill Lumi Pigment, which is this, it looks just like these. I'm coating my lashes. I'm gonna put on Dubai Lashes from the Makeup Shack. And then I'm gonna come back, show y'all my blush, highlighter, and lip, and we're done. Okay, so even though eye-wise we're done, we gotta finish our face. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight my face. I'm gonna use a Makeup Shack T38 and the same highlighter that I was raving about in my last video, which if you haven't watched my Valentine's Day tutorial, even though Valentine's Day is over, you should still watch the video. Um, but it, this is the Wet n Wild highlighter in the shade Bloom Time, and it's so pretty. It's like a pretty, peachy pink, rose gold kind of color situation. It's absolutely beautiful. Wow. Steamy. I'm gonna use this ABH blush kit. I forgot to put blush in my nose. <laughs> what did I think this was? The Makeup Shack also sent over a lash glue as well. So they have a new lash glue and it looks like this. It honestly looks like the House of Lashes glue. I haven't used House of Lashes glue in so long. Honestly, right now I'm using Son Sonia Kasha glue and that glue is ridiculously strong. Like, it's almost kind of annoying. Like, it will stay in my lashes for days. I love him and he loves me. Cause that's my butt. <laughs> Don't trip, do the cake, hot dance. Let's listen to that. Louisiana did some real 
interesting things to my ass, baby. When I tell you, <laughs> he's everything I want. He's everything I need. Okay, so we're keeping the catfish trend going. I had to switch up my outfit a little bit. We can't be cute and snag somebody and fool somebody if I was like a bum. So I took off that crusty shirt that I had on and I'm gonna go in with some new MAC Powder Kiss lipsticks. I put on one yesterday that was actually really pretty. It's a very pretty pinky nude kind of color, um, but I don't know what I did with it. It's around here somewhere, but they sent over four shades. They sent over like a red, like two kind of pretty pinky nude colors and like one reddish brown. And that's a little too. I don't even know how to describe that. Right? Oh, you know what I meant to ask y'all earlier? If anybody has ever been catfished. I want to know if y'all have any catfish stories. So if y'all do have catfish stories, let me know in the comments. Tell me what happened. We can talk it up, chat it up. I feel like on my other social media channels, I talk back to you guys a lot. Which I reply to your comments here on YouTube, but I don't ever really have like a full on blown out conversation. I actually really like in this pink lip with this blue eye. Am I doing the most? Maybe, but do we like it? Hell yeah. Now I'm gonna take this um, Wet n Wild Sin Nudes liquid lipstick, but it's like a liquid lip color. It's not like a lipstick. It's like a lip gloss kinda, I guess, but it's like a high coverage lip gloss. So it's a lip color. It's not really a lipstick. I don't know why I'm going in circles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this Pat McGrath gloss in the color Divine Rose. You guys, I love this. She's beautiful. Okay, so this is it for the final look. We're ready to catfish. Um, so if you successfully catfish somebody after this, then go ahead and let me know. Congrats. I don't know if that's something to be proud of. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And if you really weren't trying to catfish somebody and you just clicked on this video just because you liked the eye look and you wanted to see how I did my makeup and my hair, then I hope you enjoyed as well. And if you do recreate it, don't forget to tag me in all of your posts just so I can see, comment, like, repost, all that good stuff. I love seeing y'all's looks and I love interacting with you. Um, so yeah, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you don't have your post notifications on, turn them on and I will see you guys in my next video. I love you and goodbye. I promise I'm about to go get my nails done.